Welcome back. You're watching Business Morning on Channels Television. We're talking about fiscal management and plugging in loopholes. We're focusing particularly on the public sector. I still have Odilim Ewerebara, his, Ewerebara, his uh, development economist uh, from our Abuja studio. So let's take off from where we quickly had to leave off on that break. You talked about the fact that evaluation and monitoring is weak. Now, do you think that um, the day-to-day -day fiscal management of policies are compromised by the structures of the public service sector, for instance? Yes, uh, uh, first and foremost, if you look at uh, how far the, those who managed our, our fiscal policy between 2011 and, and uh, uh, May 29, 2015, we discovered that uh, they paid more attention on borrowing, not external borrowing, but domestic borrowing. So they borrowed not necessarily to invest in infrastructure or in the development of the country, but they borrowed mostly to pay salaries. That's to, 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 to deal with the recurrent issues. What that means is that we borrowed very unproductively. And we borrowed for consumption, not for investment or production. So that's why today, between 2011 and 2015, March, we have 3.25 trillion naira spent on servicing the debt, which, which is 8.1 trillion naira. That's domestic debt. Now, when you look at what we service the debt for, we are servicing the debt for, it is for the current. Now, capital side has been so drastically reduced that Nigeria is no longer developing. So what I am thinking is this. The new administration find a way to pay off this debt and make it difficult for government to borrow domestically. If we have to borrow, we have to borrow externally. But we have to be sure why we are borrowing. Are we borrowing to fix infrastructure? Are we borrowing to reduce cost of doing business? So that if we do that, the real sector will have enough money in the, in the, in the uh, uh, debt market, in the money market, to borrow in order to, to, to grow their businesses. So that's one side we are going to look at. Now, when you look at the... Sorry, Odilim, Odilim, to take you back a little bit on this point you have just made, um, at what point should, should you know, either the public, in this case Nigerians, with residents in the various states, begin to ask questions? Is it when the, um, the governors of this state are coming out to, you know, to, do, to borrow, to go to the bond market as the case may be, to do placements, or afterwards on their website they should be given an opportunity to ask questions that is the problem and thank god that we now have a new president now that we have a new president who must make governance transparent it means that you cannot go and borrow you cannot run the business in a hidden form the business uh, the business of govern of, of governance must be made public so that's why the using of uh, uh in website creating websites so that states, when they are about to borrow, the state why they want to borrow, their stakeholders, their citizens can go online and be even debate it and agree or disagree. So, so it's a good people, thing that you've mentioned that is there a system that encourages whistleblowing, for instance, in the public no, sector? No, no, there's no system yet. Remember that uh, the first whistleblower we know of was uh, uh, San, uh, uh, former Governor Sanusi uh, Lamido Sanusi. And we need to create that law. But I think that the National Assembly was in the process of coming up with such a law that we encourage whistleblowing. Because if you do not encourage whistleblowing, and also give incentives for whistleblowing, because it's not enough to, to encourage people. You have to give them incentive to do their research. Because to be a whistleblower, you have to get to the bottom of the issue and have your facts before you blow the whistle. So we must have laws, like in the United States, where whistleblowing is uh, actually uh, 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 giving the incentive to, to, to go out there and make public what is uh, the, the, the bad things a government is doing. Well, how soon do you think the new administration can restructure and block the loopholes that uh, we seem to have in the fiscal system? I think that the, this government, uh, even though people say it is slow, has to take its time to actually understand the problem because the problem is so enormous. So what I think the government should do is that as soon as he composes his, uh, 
his cabinet. The first law, the first bill he's going to send to the National Assembly is transparency in, gov in government. And the mandating that all tiers of government must create websites and their daily activities, both their budgeting processes, both their uh, in, in cash inflows and cash outflows, where do they maintain their, their accounts? Because the problem in this country is that most of the public monies are deposited in interest yielding uh, 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 deposit accounts oh. instead of uh, putting the putting the money with the CBN or putting the money where the money is supposed to be, so that the money is drawn as quickly as possible. That's why salaries have not been paid, not because the money is not there. Most of them, the money has been put in a fixed deposit account for one year, for two years, by governors and the, by minister, and then they delay paying people salary. So I think that one of the first bills the president must send is complete transparency and the grassroots grassroots inclusiveness in the management on the day-to-day -day running of government. So that everything you do will be transparent. I can go online and go and see what the governor of my state, Anambra State, is doing, how the laws are being made, and how the public money are being spent. Where is the money? Is the money in a fixed deposit account? Is the money somewhere? So that we know this. And who do you award contract? Do you award contract to fellow Nigerians or to Lebanese companies or Indian companies or Chinese companies who will transfer the excess profit to a foreign account and from there the, 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 the excess profit is moved to, to your account and then Nigeria suffers. So these are the things government has to so do. So do, do you now think that, you know, based on what you've actually pointed out, that there's a need to tighten sanctions like, for, for instance, now bad things done by government or the people employed in government, in the ministries or the, the MDAs, for instance, should there be sanctions meted out to such ones who take advantage of the loopholes in the system. We've had cases like that where, you know, at the end of the day, there isn't so much uh, of punishment meted out. This is a, a good question you asked. It was um, a famous um, uh, Roman uh, philosopher who said, the greatest incitement to crime is the hope to escape punishment. You see, one thing the United States does is that no matter how long it takes the government to find you, they will find you and punish you. When Buhari said he's going to actually look into the activities of past government, the fraud, because the fraud was massive, no doubt about that. I will appeal to Buhari to start from May 29th, 1999, because then that is the only way we can actually know, because we're talking about trillions of Naira. If Buhari is able to recover the money we are talking about not less than 20 trillion naira that money we we have the government to invest in infrastructure but if you focus narrowly on one on one particular uh, administration then you you miss the other administrations that have also committed the financial fraud in, in in the country so what i'm saying in essence is that the president should change the way we investigate a crime and fraud in this country. That's why I'm suggesting we have what I call Nigerian Economic Intelligence Agency, where uh, EFCC, ICPC, uh, uh, even the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, NAITI, uh, Auditor, uh, Office of Auditor General of, of the Federation, all these, all these organizations must come together so that it becomes a teamwork, so that where EFCC could be in charge of investigation. ICPC can be in charge of prosecuting and going to court and going to court. But also we need to have a special court because the problem is that these cases get lost in the court. So we get a special court, a special court, maybe a, a court that we focus on corruption, as it is the case in other countries. So that these cases will be will be fast tracked because um, uh, uh, um, uh, um, we're fast spent for time, but thank you so much for your perspectives on the program this morning. Odilim Ewegbera is a development economist, joined us from our Buja studio to talk about fiscal management and plugging the loopholes. Bolson, thank you so much also for sitting in on this conversation. My, my, my pleasure being, listening um, in. A good co anchor. And then the conversation continues. And then the conversation continues, Money of course. Money is involved in this big business. Don't forget, online, you can join the conversation and give us your perspectives as well on this matter. But that's the program for today. Many thanks for staying with us. I'm Harriet Agbini. Have a profitable day.